Hello. If you want to learn how to use Roblox Studio and you want to do it fast, then keep watching. Now, I've noticed on these kinds of videos that the average viewer has a drive to learn how to code for like one day. Then, they give up. Just look at the view drop-offs on these videos. Pretty crazy, right? Oh my god! I just wanted to say that you got this. Don't give up on your dream of becoming a Roblox game developer. You might have to force yourself to keep going for the next day or two, but after that, you'll get back into the groove of development once again, especially after creating something new. I learned this firsthand when I was learning how to learn. This is the first video in a series of probably five to six videos. In each video, you will learn new skills and go over already learned ones. This video will go over the basics of the interface. Basically what you look at when you open the studio. Psst, it's not as scary as it looks. We will also be going over some of the more basic elements of coding. By the end of this episode, you will know how to change the color of things and other properties such as materials, transparency, etc. So without further ado, let's begin. When you first open the studio, it will most likely look like this, with a light theme instead of a dark, but it has nothing to do with the code. It just looks different, so don't worry if yours doesn't look like this. What you're going to want to do is click on the base plate template right here and it will open the studio. Stop, don't click off. It might look intimidating at first, but it really isn't. In fact, some of these things you won't ever use. We'll just take it one step at a time. I'll briefly go over what each section does. The viewport lets you see what's in your world, such as objects or characters. The output is where errors will show or other pieces of information. The toolbox is full of community-made objects, such as plugins, models, scripts, etc. You can close out of it for this video, we won't be using it. The Explorer shows you everything in your world, from scripts, to lights, to sounds, to objects, and much more. Basically just everything that you do, everything you include into your game, will be shown right here. Finally, the Properties tab. You can access the properties of quite a few things, but for now, here, wait, let me put, let me put in a part right here. And then the Properties tab is right here, and you can change stuff like the color. You click on brick color, or you can click on the color right here. You can put in a um, hex code. You can change the material of things like plastic, or maybe if you want to make it like a neon sign, you could change it to neon and see it has like a slight glow to it. You can also change the transparency. You can go right down here to transparency, and you can change it. If you change it to one, it's fully transparent. You can change it to like 0.2. And as you can see here, it's very slightly transparent. So if you like want to make a force field, you could scale this up like that way, like that. And then you can choose the material uh, force field, which is in here somewhere. And then see, it looks sort of like a force field. Now to get into the fun part, scripting. So we can go ahead and delete this. We can go into the uh, models tab at the top, click on part. And then we can go over here, and we can click on the plus sign and add a script. You either add a script into a, the workspace right here, or you can add it into server script service right here. Now, before we do anything, I should probably scale this up a little bit. So here we go. I hope you guys can see that. So before we do anything, we want to delete this print hello world. You don't need to really understand what that means now. And then we're going to go over variables first. So. All right, so I'm actually gonna scale this up a little bit more. So first thing we're gonna be talking about today is variables. So what is a variable? Well, a variable is a, like a sort of, think of it like a box, and you put information inside of a box. And then you can access the information by typing out whatever it is that you name the variable. So you'll probably understand this more when we actually create one. So how do we create one? We type local and then we type the variable name. So let's just call it my part. And then, oh, also uh, off camera, I named the part. You'll find it in the workspace. Uh, it's going to be called part, but name it to my part. So local my part, and then you type an equals sign, and then we have to find where the, that part is in the game. So you're going to type game, which is everything here, and then you're going to type dot, and then you're going to type um, where it is, so it's in the workspace. So you're going to type game dot 
workspace and then okay here you're gonna want to press enter or tab when this little box shows up because that's gonna autofill and it's it saves so much time so you're gonna type game.workspace and then the part is inside of the workspace like when you close this it's a child like when we close this it's not there anymore but when we open it it's right here so we're gonna type game.workspace dot my part because that's the name let let's say for instance we called my part hot dog we this would no longer be this because there's nothing in the workspace called hot or my part anymore so we would name hot dog and see it showed the autocorrect and then now the fun part is changing like the properties down here of it so we have to we would type my or actually even a better way to do this uh, you can type this if you'd like but seeing as how the script which is the script that we're typing in or the code that we're typing is on this script and it's a child of hot dog so we could just type local my part equals script which is the script that we're typing on and then we would type dot parent because the hot dog is the parent of this it's right above that and when you close this see it'll close the script because it's the parent all right so now what we might want to do is we can change let's say we want to change the color so we would type we don't we don't have to type local we can just type my part and then we would change dot brick color and it even gives you a little documentation right here on how you can use it but for this instance we'll just do dot brick color and then we would type dot or no we would type equals and then we'd say brick color and then we can once again use autofill by typing enter or tab and then type dot once again and we can change whatever brick color we want it to be so let's say we want it to be uh, black and if you're gonna type it out instead of like searching it for how I just did like that you're gonna need to type this um, these two brackets right here or parentheses right here so then let's go ahead and click play and we'll see that our brick color is now black as soon as it loads all right yep so as you can see the part which is right here hot dog I, that's the first thing that kind of popped in my head but it was um, it was turned black so let me just walk you through like exactly what happened here so we don't actually need this as soon as we we can stop this we can delete this because we don't need it so what happened here is the script um, it located it created a variable my part for its script which is this and then its parent which is hot dog and then we found we took this and so okay so what a variable does is it basically takes this information like if we were to take this we could just put it right here so instead of my part we could just say this and we don't we wouldn't even need this variable right here if we were to just type that but later along down the line you'll have variables that are very very long and used very very frequently so where they are going to be need need to use variables then so that's sort of how it works you can just copy that put it here and that's how it works but sometimes you might have a variable that is like all the way down like here I mean you can't type that and even maybe you need to type it like 10 times for 10 different things down here you're not gonna want to type that out 10 more times you can just do it type it once and have a short variable never make variables too long because then you'll and also make them so that you can remember them you don't want a variable that you can't remember and then so let's also now this is a um, a pretty difficult thing um, let's change the uh, um, material so what we would do is dot material equals and then material is weird you have to type enum I have no clue what that means but you have to type it so enum dot material and then we would type dot and then we would cha choose whatever material we want so let's say um, what goes well with black um, granite I think doesn't really matter <laughs> but we want to change that so then we can go click play again and let's go over here and yep just like I said 
um, it is changed to black. I hope you guys can see that. It's probably pretty laggy, but um, yeah, the material is granite and it is also black. So now I challenge. Now I'm going to challenge you right now. Just mess around with some of these properties. You can see them all down here. You can. And it doesn't have to be like looks. It can also be can collide. So as you saw there, I could stand on top of the part. But what if we want to make it so that you can walk right through it? We could say my part dot can collide. And you would say either true or we could also say false. And then we're going to go with false, which will make us walk right through it like it's not even there. So we click play and then we walk over to where the part is. Oh, huh. the part's not there, and that's because it's not anchored, and when the can collide is true, it just fell right through the um, base plate. So it's not going to be there right now. So let's pause it um, first. Actually, we, we don't have to go down here. The anchor, you can select it right here, but because we're talking about variables, let's just create a variable saying my part dot anchored equals true. So that will make it stay in place so let's click play and we'll see hopefully it's still there didn't fall off the map and yep it is right there and it is and we can just walk right through it yep we're not even touching it we're just walking right through it so those are a few examples of different um different er, um, properties so i challenge you just mess around with it make something cool and i'll see you in the next video also subscribe Goodbye.